Good morning, everyone. I'm Al Sang, CTO here at Strongloop, and I'm very pleased to introduce today Strongloop API Server. Again, here at Strongloop, we stand behind Node.js. We're a leading contributor to the open source project. Why Node? Because it's fast. It gets the job done. Um, and it's highly scalable. It uses JavaScript on the back end, and it's highly ubiquitous. It meets the needs for concurrency for mobile, IoT, your next-gen web project, and most importantly, APIs. Welcome to the future. So what is Strongloop API Server? It's an API server that we built to build APIs really quickly, get them to scale, secure them, do all these use cases that you normally would do with Node, just make it easier. And when I mean by easy, I really mean get started easy. So npm install dash g, strong loop, and you're done, and you're getting started. So let's take a look at what's inside the strong loop API server. As you know, when we launched as a company, we developed a framework called Loopback. We also have mobile backend as a services that we built on top of Loopback. And the big change here is that we've refactored out these mobile backend services to be separate from Loopback for those folks who are using Loopback for, say, next-gen web and don't care so much about mobile clients and push services and that kind of thing. We also have connectors, uh, again, to bridge the divide between data, existing data and services uh, for backend systems. And we're going to build this thing called the controller. And we'll talk more about what that controller does today. But going from dev to stage to production has never been easy for Node. We're trying to build that, bridge that divide. As you know, we also have a monitoring option. Uh, we've expanded this monitoring option to not only include strong ops as a console, but be able to easily integrate your own console, right? Uh, within the enterprise, you have tools like Nagios. You may have a console that you use as SaaS in the cloud. We've exposed our interface to be able to interface with these consoles because we recognize that you need that flexibility. Then the private registry. Uh, we're a reseller now of, of uh, Artifactory, uh, NPM, uh, Nojitsu's offering as well. It's your choice on what you want to do to host your packages. And we also have open source community tooling for package, package management and we built tooling to make it easy for you to switch between uh, registries. And of course, we're all about um, spreading the, the expertise of what we know about Node to everyone else in the community and our customers at large. Um, so we stand behind Strongloop API Server as a supported offering and bundling of these things. OK, let's talk about Loopback. So the first thing that we've built, and you'll see this in a separate presentation, is a GUI. We've heard quite um, from a, uh, from quite a bit of you that you wanted to see a graphical way of being able to build loopback applications as easy as it is to use the Node uh, API itself, right? What is loopback great at? Well, it's great at auto-generating APIs from models, right? So define a model and immediately scaffold a API endpoint that I can play with, consume on my, my Rust client, tweak it and adjust it, and there you go, I, can, I have this live virtualization of APIs by simply defining a model, something that I'm not already familiar with. On top of that, we offer SDKs for you to actually consume these APIs so that you don't have to start from scratch of just interfacing with the models at the raw API endpoint layer. So we have SDKs for iOS, Android, next-gen web, through our integration with Angular. You're free to use anything you'd like like other uh, frameworks like Backbone, Ember, Knockout, you name it. Loopback is open source and extensible. It's your choice on where you run it, on premise or in a cloud. So if you have outgrown your mobile backend as a service provider, for example, uh, feel free to download Loopback and run it yourself. And we also provide security and management around your APIs because we recognize the fact that you need to actually maintain your APIs to your end users. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight a couple of things within today's presentations for net new uh, items and in loopback. I'm going to go ahead and show some of the new scaffolding features that we built and moved over to Yeoman. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to go ahead and scaffold an app. 
So let's do yo loop back. And you notice that these were once SLC commands in our command line utility. We just simply move them to yeoman uh, generators. So let's go ahead and give it a project directory. We'll call it my project. And we'll go ahead and assume that the application name is the same as the directory, my project. What it's doing now is it's going to our private registry. You'll notice ci.strongloop.com, and it's pulling down all the NPM modules that are associated with loopback. Great. So now that I have my application, let's go ahead and change directory there. And I'm going to go ahead and scaffold an a API from scratch. So let's go ahead and create a model. I'm going to go ahead and create a person model. Assign it a data source. We're going to go ahead and use the in-memory default data source and expose this through REST. The name of the REST resource will be the plural form of the model, people. And let's give it some properties. So a person, let's go ahead and say it has a first name and it's a string. It's required. Same thing, last name, string, required. And let's just change it up with a birth date, change the data type to date. Let's say it's required. Great, happy with that. Um, and now that I have a model defined, let's go ahead and run the application itself to get to the API. So, port equals eight. Fire up a new browser session and go to our Explorer here. Great. This is our API Explorer. Here's the people resource that we defined using the person model. And let's go ahead and create a person. So just go ahead and copy the contents here and give it some property values, so my last name, enter in birth date. Great, it's gone ahead and created a new person and I can go ahead and do a get on this, confirm that all of this is writing back to our in-memory DB. Same simplicity of getting zero to 60 from models, how you view your data, to API endpoints, we've just changed the tooling to be a lot more intuitive and easy to use through human. Again, um, we built mobile backend as a service on top of Loopback as a product offering for the folks who are using the parses and the conveys and outgrown that solution and want to control actually what your backend has. Our mobile backend as a service has pre-built mobile models. It also has pre-built services like push notification, geopoint um, calculations. Uh, we have social login now so that you're able to log in through your Facebook or GitHub account through, into Loopback. We of course have a built-in user model that has a user flow for registering new users and logging in. And we have a storage service uh, that we've provided so you are able to interface with your Amazon S3s or whatever block storage providers that you have for uploading pictures, for example, or files. Also new to the mobile backend as a service, we've added in the replication API for you to do offline sync, the most popular use case for um, the replication API being able to synchronize when you're offline your, mo your mobile web apps data. Connectors, so same thing. Um, being able to interface with your data is extremely important. We can't just assume that you have uh, your new application with data that exists in the cloud. You have existing data. You have existing data in, in a myriad of systems. We've expanded our connectors to include SQL Server. We have um, proprietary or custom, custom connectors for enterprise systems like ATG. Um, we keep expanding on connectors and 
this is a way for you to get to your data, not have to worry about what that data is, and think, simply think of these things as models in the end, regardless of how they're stored. Something that we're making a lot of progress on that we're going to be releasing very soon um, is our controller. And this is the DevOps side of StrongLoop. So we try to recognize the fact that Node, it's sort of in its infancy and adoption in the enterprise, needs help in tooling, needs help in understanding best practices for how do I build a Node application and uh, package what I have, deploy it to production, monitor what's there, um, and what we've done is we built controller. The controller is basically the embodiment of tools to help you build, deploy, scale your Node application or your loopback app. So we have things like cluster to be able to cluster your, your Node app and control the number of worker processes. Um, we have integration through debugger, through um, our project community sponsorship and help in Node Inspector as a project. Um, and we built tooling in being able to actually now package your Node application and then subsequently deploy it through the controller to be uh, ran in production and managed by the process manager a new entity that we're working on now. And again, for operations, we have built more tooling around log management. And again, as I mentioned before, we have private registries as well to help with the actual packaging of your apps within your own private registry in the firewall, not just the one on npmjs.org. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick demo of build, talk you more through the process because it's involved. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and introduce the new command SLC build. So this is what this is going to do is it's going to take the scaffolded app that I have, my project, and it's simply going to package this up as far as its dependencies um, and whatnot and bundle them so that it's ready to be in deployable form. Great, so now that I have this up, you can see now that I have my project TGZ. And that's ready to go. So what we're doing here is basically building the app by packaging, publishing the app to your private registry. And from your private registry then, being able to SLC deploy this into production on the number of instances that are within your production environment. And you can see more, read more about this on our docs with SLC build and the forthcoming SLC deploy. Okay, monitoring. So again, understanding the health of your, your Node application in production is extremely important. As you know, we've released profilers to help with heap and CPU. We had our own uh, monitoring console called StrongOps. We still have that, but the big change here is that we've opened up the, the possibilities of being able to interface with your, your in-house monitoring solutions or the ones that you've already subscribed to in the cloud. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, demo the StatsD integration that we built. So StatsD is basically a Node.js-based aggregation server, aggregates metrics and data. I have it running in the background here. And we have the Node application that's been running. I've been imparting load through it with the generator to get some meaningful stats out of it. And the StatsD server is running here. I have Graphite, which is an open source visualization tool that allows me to see what the StatsD server has collected. And the StatsD ser uh, server is again using our strong agent to be able to collect these metrics from your Node application. StatsD is a popular protocol, so you're, you can now also go out to the cloud and use something like Datadog and be able to show your metrics for what you're collecting as well. So your choice on being able to interface with your data, not just using our strong ops console. So that's what's new in monitoring.
Last but not least, Node expertise. So we've been out in the field quite a bit, learned quite a lot about Node, real life use cases. We're able to provide technical support, training, certification, consulting for your project, reviewing best practices, your architecture, you name it. Uh, we're out there to support our products as themselves as a commercial offering. That's pretty much it. Again, it's easy. Go to strongloop.com, get started to get started yourself. Install Strongloop API server by npm installing g strongloop. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to contact us at callback at strongloop.com or go to our website. Thanks for your time.